Well, back to Harbaugh. Rick Perry's uneven performance may have been the biggest headline to come out of last night's debate, but it may not be the most adoring. For the hard time in a row, the third time in a row, Republican audiences out there made news. The audiences and not the kind you want. Here's the crowd last night reacting to a question from a gay soldier over in Iraq. This guy's on duty, on post. And watch what happens. Let's listen. Because something happened last night that I think needs your full attention. It's this week's uncut commentary. The audience either applauded or were neutral to every question asked in the form of one of those little videos uh, until they got to this one. At last night's debate, we learned that the flag pin wearing We Support the Troops crowd actually despises some of the troops. Um, I want to show uh, you, well, all of us, a clip of something that happened recently at the Republican debate. Um, let's take a look at this. This question stirred up a whole lot of controversy online. It comes from Stephen Hill, who is a soldier serving in Iraq. In 2010, when I was deployed to Iraq, I had to lie about who I was because I'm a gay soldier and I didn't want to lose my job. My question is, under one of your presidencies, do you intend to circumvent the progress that's been made for gay and lesbian soldiers in the military? Yeah, I, I, I would say any type of sexual activity has absolutely no place in the military, and the fact that they're making a point to include it as a provision within the military that we are going to recognize a group of people uh, and give them a special privilege uh, to, uh, to, to uh, in donut and removing don't ask, don't tell, I think tries to inject social policy into the military. What do, you, what do you think about the boos and that no one ever even addressed those boos? Well, I think that's really the point. Here we had a, a service member speaking from Iraq to that audience, questioning those candidates. And, not, and when the jeers, jeering a person who's serving our country, it's unthinkable. You, you realize these people didn't even thank this soldier, Ed. I don't care what, you know, I don't care whether he, what he is. He's been over there carrying a gun to fight for these cats, to fight for the corporations that, that, that they're all about. They're buddy corporations. He's over there doing it. Not one damn person on that stage is, and he doesn't have the decency. Santorum doesn't have the decency to say thank you. Whether you like the question or not is immaterial. The point is this man answered his country's call to defend us and all those assembled in that air-conditioned Florida auditorium. He deserves some respect. I can't imagine any real conservative like Barry Goldwater or Dwight Eisenhower or either of the two George Bushes booing such a serviceman. As a matter of fact, I'd like to think that George Patton would probably have thanked the soldier for his service and then slapped the audience members who booed. And he'd be right. Boo, boo, you hear people booing. This is stunning to me. And boo, the Republican debate crowd booing the deployed American soldier in Iraq. Uh, like the let him die moment and all of the previous ones of these, uh, no Republican candidate on stage said anything about the booing. Uh, no candidate in this case even thought to say something like, thank you for your service, sir. There was nothing like that said during the debate. A few of the candidates have since said that it was an unfortunate moment that the soldier was booed, even though none of them, as I said, said anything about it at the time. Rick Santorum's explanation on Fox News about it today was that he just didn't hear the booing of the soldier. I, I am sort of more interested uh, in his unprompted declaration um, there. The sexual act, any type of sexual activity has absolutely no place in the military. I'm sort of more interested in this unprompted declaration from him that nobody in the military should have any kind of sexual activity at all. He's calling for a celibate military. I would like to hear more about this idea, as I'm sure would every 18-year-old in the country who is thinking about enlisting in our military. You know, if I have one regret from last evening, it's that I didn't stand up and say, you know, you're booing a U.S. serviceman who is denied being able to express his sexual preference. Uh, that's not right. That's not right, and there's something very, very wrong with that. And when it came to don't ask, don't tell, um, I think we should have repealed that a long time ago. But there is nothing. This bloodthirsty, merciless mob of haters hates more than being called exactly what they are. Where there was booing in the audience when a gay soldier started to speak, 
Nobody said anything. You didn't, Rick Santorum, none of the others did. Do you wish you had said something, intervened at that moment? Well, the thing that's being overlooked is that in the heat of a debate, when you have exactly 60 seconds to answer any question, you know, taking that time to, to try and figure out why they were booing, I happen to think that maybe they were booing the, the whole don't ask, don't tell repeal more so than booing that soldier. But we didn't know that. So that was not the time to try and decipher why, was it they, why were they reacting that way. That the, that the boos and the applause has not always coincided with my own views. But I haven't uh, uh, stepped in to try and say uh, this one's right, this one's wrong, and, and uh, instead I focus on the things that I think I ought to say. It was a very legitimate question, and I think it deserved a legitimate response. And the response should have been, thank you for your service. Don't ask, don't tell is behind us, and we move on together as Americans. I didn't hear the boos. I, I, I heard the question and answered the question. It was, I was quite stunned that none of those candidates on stage took that moment to chastise that audience. I did have a visceral response. I'm not sure it's because my son spent a year in Iraq. Mm -hmm. And I know my son and all the f kids with him, um, kids, they're grown men, um, I don't think they give a damn whether a guy firing a rifle to protect them is gay or straight. I don't think they care about that. And look, this kid risks his life. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. kid is there for a year. And I, quite frankly, I, I thought it was reprehensible. Mm -hmm. Right. And no one spoke well up. Said. That entire panel, not one person said anything. For the third time in as many debates, crowd members have either booed or cheered at what some say are highly inappropriate moments. You know, it's bad enough for these morons that interrupt these proceedings with this kind of stupidity. What's worse is the candidates don't at the time say, you know what? You don't speak for anybody in this room and just sit down and shut up or get out of the hall. This is a guy that's serving our country. Uh, let's not boo. It's disrespectful. I think it was a missed opportunity for every single Republican on that stage not to take on the two or three crazy people in that crowd who booed. If I were standing on that stage, I'd have taken advantage of it and said, those two or three of you, you don't represent the Republican Party. And the House would have been brought down with applause. And I do know, because I heard from people in the audience, it was isolated, and the people around them all hissed and told them they were idiots, and they shouldn't boo. Even if the booing hadn't happened, as they're you're talking about bringing back don't ask, don't tell, you would have thought it was uh, the solution to every economic problem in the world. Any other soldier on that screen asking anything else would have automatically gotten probably an over-the-top uh, response uh, you know, praising him for his service. Uh, but this man is so homophobic, yep. he, he just could not bring himself to do that. Yeah, if that had been anybody else, there would have been a unified salute on the part of the candidates, just the way they sang the anthem two debates ago. So At least Brett Baer didn't deny that he heard it. <laughs> Uh, uh, like Rick Santorum and like all those other clowns on stage, none of whom uh, professed having heard the boos. But uh, who cares? If it was just two people, if it was just three people, it was wrong. It's wrong. That's the point. This is a member of the military wearing the uniform, protecting this country, happens to be gay. It was wrong, wrong, wrong to boo that man. Whether they were booing him or the question, so what? The uh, people, whoever they are, yelling, booing the gay soldier or, or, or cheering on the fact that you put somebody to death who's on a gurney because he doesn't have insurance. Is that the party of Lincoln? The Army reservist is suing the government. He says his rights are being violated because the military won't give benefits to his same-sex spouse. Captain Stephen Hill filed the question from his base in Iraq, but he makes his home in Columbus with his husband, Joshua Snyder. We're legally married in D.C. and six other states. Not here in Ohio. The pair was married in May at the grave of a gay soldier. Hill's fight to serve openly ended with last month's repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell. At this point, there was no fear. We, we knew that we were perfectly fine. We could give each other a hug hello when he comes back to the States instead of hiding under an escalator and saying goodbye to each other like we did when he left. But now the couple is taking on a new battle, joining seven other gay military couples in a lawsuit against the federal government. We believe strongly that DOMA and laws like it ignore our families and treat us less than our married counterparts. They are an injustice. A good day to you. Thanks for joining us, Josh.
Hi, how are you? I'm well, thanks. I hope you are, too. I know that Stephen is one of eight plaintiffs in a federal suit being filed today to overturn parts of the Defense of Marriage Act. So I do want to get to talking about that. But first, that night, your husband's overseas. He's telling the entire nation at a GOP debate that he is gay. Before that moment even happened, what were your thoughts leading up to it? Um, it was it was a little nerve wracking. Uh, we weren't even sure if the video was actually going to be played. So uh, when they said that they were moving to social issues, uh, the reality kind of hit once we saw him come on screen. Uh, basically, we're looking for equal rights when it comes to being a spouse in the military. Right now, our straight counterparts that serve in the military that have the same responsibilities, uh, whether they're active or inactive in the services, um, are given spousal benefits. And right now, Stephen and I are not. Okay, how are you doing with all the uh, the pressure and, and dealing with all this? Uh, it's a lot. It's, it, I'm not going to lie. It's it's definitely a lot, but uh, I guess I'll try and get used to it. Hey, you did well in the interview. Uh, thank that's you good. very much. Okay, Josh, thank you for joining us. Have a good day. You too. Joining me now is Joshua Snyder, the husband of Captain Hill and one of the plaintiffs in this case. Thanks for being here, Joshua. Thank you, Reverend Charlton. You just want to be treated like any other human couple that put themselves in danger's way for the country. Exactly. Stephen's over there doing the same thing as any other soldier, and uh, we are legally married, and we just want the same rights. With all the GOP candidates up on the stage, but it's the audience and all the things that they shout that really fill me up with rage. Like a gay service member asked Rick Santorum if he'd repeal, don't ask, don't tell. Excuse me. I will not be silent. An American service member was just booed. We should never, ever treat a member of the military that way. First, I'd like to know what that guy's workout regimen is because he is jacked. He's got some guns. <laughs> he is jacked, which is the thing that overwhelmed my uh, input when I was watching. But it, it, more seriously, I think that... Um, I don't want to be unfair because it's hard to tell. You have a crowd of a thousand people, right, or however many people are in that room, how many people are booing. It didn't sound like a ton. That said, the the more disturbing thing to me was the applause that Rick Santorum's answer got. Is the GOP the big anti-gay? Maybe now's the time we say what the heck? Is the GOP the big anti-gay? Yes. What happened that night when you dismayed? Not one GOP came to save the day for the soldier who spoke because he's gay. Is the GOP the big anti-gay? If it wasn't for soldiers, straight. Again, there might not be any.